Okay, let's talk Xbox. Why Microsoft seem to be doing everything right, and should Sony and others be worried? There is an awful lot of talk right now about the Xbox Series S and X and the PS5. Now, with only a month to go until release, the battle of the consoles, the console war is on. But I'll be honest, I think Microsoft are playing a completely different game. Here's why. So if you're wanting to stay up to date with everything that's going on with the new consoles, the PS5 and the new Xboxes, just remember you can press subscribe, which is just like down here. And luckily I've been able to get both consoles. So if you're excited as I am, um, yeah, let's go and find out what these consoles are like together. So as I say, I have actually been lucky to get both consoles. And on the Xbox, excitingly, I've also been able to reserve this on the all access system subscription. And I think Microsoft are offering insane value when it comes to Game Pass, the console, and Xbox Live. And leading into getting both of these consoles, I actually think Microsoft and Xbox kind of got the momentum right now. So why do I think that? Well, amazing back catalog and compatibility. I think they've absolutely smashed it out of the park with that, with thousands of games available when I turn that new Xbox on. Many of these are also getting performance increases, and there have been loads of videos released over the past week or so really showing just how amazing our last-gen games are going to look in the next-gen hardware. And let's be honest, you know, seeing those reviewers, they all seem, I don't know if they've been paid by Microsoft or if they're just as excited as I am, but they genuinely seem really impressed with the improvements. Uh, Digital Foundry, they were just like unanimously amazed by the 60 frame and hopefully up to 120 frame performance out of previous gen games. And realistically, this makes the transition from Xbox One to the Series X, well, almost just like a nice continuation instead of a dead set hardware change. Sony, on the other hand, well, I'm a little bit confused by their messaging, and I think some other people out there are as well. So back in 2013, I think we all know that Sony absolutely demolished Microsoft when it came to the launch of PS4 and the Xbox One. This is how you share your games on PS4. Thanks. They kept it simple for the players. Just simple. And that got so many people behind Sony. And I really think that momentum led them to the incredible sales that they have, which is over 110 million consoles going into this next gen. I actually think that messaging was pretty pivotal in setting the precedent for the next seven years. And now what gets me slightly worried about their confusing marketing and messaging over the PS5. Slightly, I would say, maybe even devious kind of marketing and comms around cross-platform gaming just seems strange. From a business perspective, it makes total sense to still be developing games for the PS4 when you have 110 million potential customers. We've seen it with The Last of Us Part 2, Ghost of Tsushima. Lots of games have beaten the previous record because there are just so many places put on PlayStation. But what doesn't make sense is Spider-Man Miles Morales. Zero... Mm. Do, 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 do. Horizon Zero Dawn, that's one. But what doesn't make sense is Horizon Zero Dawn, Spider-Man Miles Rat Morales, which kind of seemingly were exclusives for PS5, showing all the advantages of the hardware, but then they go, oh yeah, it's coming out on PS4 as well. <laughs> like, it just doesn't seem to set right with a lot of people going in to buying these consoles. The other thing that is slightly kind of disappointing me just about the PS5 launches, I actually feel like we don't necessarily know too much apart from obviously the tech specs and kind of things like that, but we've not really seen anything of the PS5 and it's only a month away from release. Microsoft, on the other hand, they've given pre-production models 
out to YouTubers, which is an amazing thing from a marketing perspective, giving it to the hands of people who talk to the people who are going to buy it. It just seems like they've got some really great momentum going into the launch. If you compare that to 2013, which let's be honest, from a marketing and just branding perspective was a shambles. Confusion over the Kinect and selling it with the Kinect and issues with pricing and then the dreaded digital <laughs> digital rights media restrictions. Like, yikes. Who thought that was a good idea at the time? Just terrible. But sometimes you have to learn from your mistakes. And I do feel as though Microsoft and the Xbox division really have learn from their mistakes. Ticking pretty much, I can imagine most of the boxes that current gamers are wanting. Upskilling and upsampling and bringing in previous games that you've spent a lot of money on and maybe haven't even finished. Really clear transparency with what you're aiming to do with the console. Pretty much all of these upgrades, apart from the hardware, are all also free, which I can't believe anyone would complain at. Compatibility with your current accessories, including things like steering wheels, obviously extra controllers and different accessories. I think that is a masterstroke on Xbox's part. And obviously the huge news of the purchasing of Bethesda for $7.5 billion addresses, hopefully for Xbox and Microsoft, the issue of maybe not that many great AAA titles like Sony did on the PlayStation 4, which I think has been a huge factor in that being such a success. And the amazing thing for me is this is all on all access. I get it all on the 10th of November. I can't wait. So at the time of recording, if you look at the bigger picture, Microsoft have just recently announced that 15 million people have actually signed up to Game Pass. And that number is only going to increase with the new Xboxes, the new purchases, and the ability now to play those games remotely, which I think is just, we'll get onto that. And what I really think, and the reason for this video is I really think that is where Microsoft long-term are hedging their bets. And I really think the reason for that is we've seen a huge generational shift in the past five to 10 years, basically the lifetime of the previous consoles into a subscription-based service. Obviously, services that we all use almost every day from Amazon Prime Video, Amazon Prime, Netflix, Spotify, Apple Music, our phone contracts, and even now cars can be purchased on a subscription-based service. As a generation, I really think we're starting to see the value of a monthly subscription service to be able to come and go as we please, but also to allow us to have that choice and competition. And with Microsoft, I don't know if it's unfortunate, but they're kind of fighting two wars right now. One with Sony on the physical hardware side, the physical, physical side of actual consoles with Sony, with the PS5, and also Amazon and Google when it comes to cloud-based streaming games and a service. Like that is, like they've got a lot on their plate. <laughs> So if you're not aware, you might not be, but basically 60% of the internet is run by three companies, Microsoft, Amazon, and Google. Pretty much the entire internet is ran by those three companies with their server systems, AWS, Google Cloud Computing, and Microsoft Azure. So it's no surprise that they are the three leaders in trying to bring cloud-based computer games to the masses. But why is this important? Well, long term, I really think this is down to things like emerging markets and a younger generation. Countries and people that are all using mobile phones more and more as their daily and main device. The lower entry point is massive for the success of these devices to happen and these services to even work. That's why like Stadia and now Luna and Game Pass are all significantly less than a five, six hundred pound piece of hardware. And the one thing that they all share in common, they're all going to want to bring it to your mobile phone. And in reality, why would these companies be bothering to put so much energy and effort into this space? Well, overall, it's to try and obviously get a captive market in these emerging markets. And in reality, what are they going to get? Well, hopefully a huge customer base to earn lots of revenue and to keep shareholders really happy. And if you look over at most major 
kind of tech companies. This is where a lot of them are trying to increase their revenue. Apple launching the iPhone SE earlier this year. Google, even with their cheap phone, and Android absolutely obliterates it when it comes to lower cost phones in emerging markets. Amazon, Google, and Microsoft all want a piece of that pie and want a pie to get bigger. And then when the pie is really big, they want to take a nice slice of it. We'll always bring it back to food. We also have the real, very real future of much, much quicker mobile internet access through things like 5G. And with all of these tech companies pushing 5G, again, most of the developed countries, it means that we're so much more accessible to big games. And that's one of the limitations I would think of a physical hardware phone is you're very much limited to the hardware potential of that. Whereas you are able to stream at one to two millisecond response time, a game that's powered on a huge computer. Well, which service do you want? Now, I'm really happy to see both competition coming back to the gaming world and in tech. I think it's really exciting what we're going to see over the next seven and I think 10 years when it comes to this space. As we all know, great competition breeds better innovation. So I really hope that Amazon do really well, Google do really well, Microsoft do really well, all of these, you know, trillion dollar companies do really well because as a consumer, we're only going to see the benefit of it. But let me know what you think. Do you think this is where Microsoft are hedging their bets and that they are going? Do you think this is good for gamers or do you think we should be seeing continuous improvements in hardware and not just cloud-based services? So my big take from this is I actually think it could be a great time to invest in Microsoft and Microsoft stock. If you look at it, tech companies are going through a huge bubble right now. But if Microsoft are able to achieve what I think could be their master plan, I think Microsoft could be going further and further ahead in terms of their value. If you enjoyed this video, if you enjoyed this type of video, remember to say you can subscribe, like, comment, let me know what your thoughts are. And I can't wait to bring you more and more content on the Xbox and the PS5 when I finally get my hands on them. I'm not big enough yet to get those pre-samples, but maybe one day, maybe next time around, if there is a, even any more consoles. We'll see you on the next one. Bye for now. The dog is there. My battery's died. I'm going to go now. Bye.